Welcome to Master Your Destiny Hard Product brought to you by NHP and this afternoon, this late afternoon, we're talking about saving lives with the Namibia blood transfusion and we have Titus Shivute from there uh, just coming through right now. It's great to be in studio with you. Guys. No, no, thank you for coming and for giving us the Valentine's Day greeting. <laughs> yeah. Should you yeah. find it all red and grow gorgeous? Yeah. So, yeah. So tell me, Titus, one person, how many people can I actually save from just my what blood donation? Okay, with the one blood donation, you mm -hmm. can actually potentially help save the lives of three patients. That's because uh, we actually, as the blood transfusion service, take your one unit or your one donation yeah. and then we split it into its various components. So okay. the patient will actually at the end of the day receive one of your components, meaning your blood can potentially go to three different um, patients. Wow. So they can end up receiving your red blood cells, they can end up receiving your plasma, okay. or they can end up receiving your platelets. Ah. Now, yeah, this method is obviously just to maximize the use uh, for blood and blood products uh, across Namibia and for us also to be able to help save the lives of more patients. So mm -hmm. one blood donation equals uh, three, three lives wow. potentially can, saved. Can you believe that just me, just me, I'm yes. saving three lives. <laughs> yes. Now we know that COVID-19, the pandemic hit hard on everybody and I'm sure it, it could be said the same for the blood transfusion service. Yes, uh, we've received, um, oh, we've had significant shortages of mm -hmm. blood at uh, hospitals and medical centers around the country. Um, there were even critical shortages uh, when we had lockdowns and um, mm -hmm. we couldn't do blood donation sessions in Wolvish Bay for about six months as well. And uh, currently, yeah, we've had to re-strategize and just relook our approach. And yeah, we are slowly but surely getting there in terms of recovery. Mm -hmm. Of course, we also couldn't do blood donation sessions at educational institutions. Uh, yeah, down. yeah, because they're all shut down. So mm -hmm. you can't go to schools, vocational centers, universities, and mm -hmm. they formed up uh, close to 30% of total collections that normally come in for the blood transfusion really? service. Yeah, so that sector was totally cut. And yeah, yeah with the various restrictions, restrictions as well uh, with us not being able to travel to various towns and do mobile setups there. Mm -hmm. um, there were operational um, you know, shortages as well um, for, for various patients across the country. So the pandemic generally was a really big hit on us and uh, we've had to re-strategize um, as well as relook our operational um, model in order for us to just better suit and better recover and ensure that each and every patient that needs blood during these times is actually able to uh, receive a blood transfusion. Mm -hmm. We've also um, have to had to enhance our uh, safety uh, measures just to ensure and to make sure that the process is as safe as possible mm -hmm. for the patient and in order to do that we uh, are really glad to have received um, assistance from both the World Health Organization mm -hmm. as well as the Ministry of Health and Social Services in assisting us to uh, basically be consistently still operational uh, despite all the various challenges that came with this pandemic. Looking at uh, COVID-19 and the pandemic, I am an avid blood donor, but what happens then if I have posted positive for COVID-19? Can I still come in and donate blood? As a blood donor, you can still continue to donate blood after okay. you've tested uh, positive for COVID-19. There's just a deferral period from the date of recovery uh, to the date when you can donate. So you need to wait for a 28 day uh, period, which is about a month mm -hmm. before you are actually eligible. Once you've been declared that you've recovered, okay. yeah, then you'll become eligible 28 days thereafter mm -hmm. and you can start donating. Um, as a matter of fact, it's actually good uh, for COVID-19 patients to uh, begin donating because oh. um, uh, or recover uh, individuals that have actually recovered from COVID-19 uh, to uh, begin donating because in South Africa they are doing what is referred to as convalescent plasma or, or yeah which is basically individuals who've had COVID-19 mm -hmm. who've recovered mm -hmm. are donating a, uh, a component of their blood which is plasma mm -hmm. to assist COVID-19 patients because of the various nutrients as well as the mm -hmm. the, the various antibodies that have now been um, stronger, yeah, yeah they are stronger and in your in your in your body considering that you've recovered so as a medical intervention, Namibia hasn't introduced that yet, mm -hmm. but we do have a plasma program for individuals that specifically want to donate uh, this component. Mm -hmm. They are welcome to visit our head office in 35 Tau Street, Ospen Platz. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we are readily available and willing to help and, and get them on that program. It's a, it's a different kind of donation from yes. the normal one okay. that you come
currently um, that individuals are sort of used to in public. So as opposed to you just donating your full unit, mm -hmm. with this donation actually, when, when they uh, do an incision, your blood is actually, it goes into a centrifuge, which is a machine that spins really fast mm -hmm. and separates your various components and then it literally only takes the component it requires yes. to the bag and okay. then the rest of it is returned to your body through the same needle incision uh, uh, that it, that is inserted in your vein mm -hmm. and yeah it lasts about half an hour normally and you can actually donate uh, each and every month or uh, every oh, two weeks if you're donating is, plasma. Don't you feel like that I should have COVID so I can Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so uh, that has definitely been amongst the things that we've um, introduced. And okay. yeah, I, it's a coincidence that I'm here today because today is the anniversary, first anniversary of our plasma program because we introduced it on this very day Happy last day. <laughs> I feel like the NFM should be giving you gifts now. <laughs> yeah, perhaps we should, <laughs> we should return. <laughs> So say, because a lot of people tend to be asymptomatic when they've tested, well, before they even get tested, and someone might not know that they actually have had uh, the virus because no symptoms were shown. So would you advise before I come in to, to give blood to go and get tested just to be on the safe side? Yes, if you do suspect that uh, you, there's a potential infection, yeah. we do advise that you definitely seek uh, medical assistance in okay. that and perhaps test um, for COVID. But I also just want to remind the listeners that uh, COVID-19 is a respiratory virus. Okay. So it's uh, within your respiratory system and can't actually be picked up uh, within your blood as a result. Uh -huh. Yeah, which is why uh, nasal tests are the ones that are done in order I to see. test for COVID-19 as opposed to blood samples because you, you will be unable to, to determine that. Okay. Yeah, but once you do recover because your immune system is basically functional to the entire body mm -hmm. yeah then definitely your antibodies uh, can potentially help save uh, the lives of uh, another patient at the hospital yes Titus there's been so many myths surrounding you know giving blood and blood donating so would you then say that one should be able to pay to 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 give blood or be paid to give blood can you just expand on that the Namibia Blood Transfusion Service is a non-profit organization. So we are set up as a Section 21 company for cost recovery. That means that uh, we basically put out a lot into um, ensuring that um, all of the blood as well as uh, all blood products are available to patients. Yeah. And now we, our model is cost recovery for all of the costs that we incur. Okay. So the process of collecting blood as well as testing and storing and distributing is uh, actually a very costly one mm -hmm. and uh, the mandate that we have from the world health organization actually states that it's illegal for you to actually sell blood or body tissues mm -hmm. that's why you can uh, you can go and donate an organ for example but you can't put it on your instagram and be like yeah hey. i got a uh, i got okay. a kidney here yeah yeah so that's the model that we operate on and there are service fees charged for the administering of a safe blood product where, uh, where we actually ensure that this blood product is as safe as possible. We do all kinds of tests. Amongst the things that um, Namibia actually is lucky to have in terms of the, the, the African uh, continent is we do NAT testing on blood transfusions. What NAT testing is, nucleic acid amplification tests, where we are actually testing for the genetic material of viruses and infections mm -hmm. to significantly lower the window period uh, in order to make our blood products amongst the safest in Africa. We actually became only the second country in Africa to do that about mm -hmm. um, four or five years ago. Mm -hmm. So uh, now NAT testing is a very, very costly program. It actually contributes to close to 30% of total cost for the Namibia Blood Transfusion Service. Then you have to remember that blood actually needs to be transported to various locations. Exactly. But and stored. Yeah, and stored in a in a specific cold chain management system. And in the same vein, you actually need to remember that blood is made up of living cells. So each and everything as it's operated should not countermeasure that. Okay. The fact that all of these cells, your red blood cells, are living cells, and in order for them to be transfused onto a patient at the end of the day, they gotta continue 
being stored and uh, being dealt with in a manner that does not put that into disrepute. Okay. Yeah, so all of these contribute to some of the costs, and obviously there's the employee costs. Mm -hmm. We also have to travel a lot mm -hmm. um, around the country in order to ensure that we do setups. Um, t t today we had a setup in in Mariento, mm -hmm. as well as Wolfish Bay and Oshakati, mm -hmm. and and uh, and all of these places. So um, I also just want to remind. Um, uh, our listeners that there are specific instruments and equipment that are required in order for the Namibia blood transfusion service to continue operating and all of these instruments because of um, the country that we are in have to be procured internationally oh, wow. we have to get blood bags for example from as far as Japan yeah, yeah to and and these are basically uh, quality assurance or quality assured products in order for us to ensure that at the end of the day, the blood product that we are giving onto a, a patient is as safe as possible. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, keep the, the yeah. Alive yeah. Like and we are at the mercy of obviously international currencies yeah. as a result. Yeah. yeah. So, but primarily our duty is to ensure that the process of blood donation is as safe as possible, and we obviously aim to, to ensure that the safety of the donor who actually donates the blood and that of a, a recipient, the individual who receives the blood at the end of the day is uh, uh, safely assured. So what we're trying to say is mm -hmm. in layman's terms, I as a blood donor cannot walk in to you guys and be also, eh, I'm selling uh, one, <laughs> one <laughs> Unfortunately liter for, for 200 not. Namibian dollars or even, you know, get to a hospital and say, I'm, I'm able, can I pay for the Yeah, unfortunately, yes, unfortunately not. But uh, yeah. all patients who actually receive transfusions at state hospitals okay. receive it for free. Yeah. And, um, yeah, there are obviously just other tests uh, done in the private sector and other costs incurred as a result. But primarily, uh, we do not sell blood. We just charge a service fee for the administering of a specific uh, blood product yeah. uh, that is as safe as possible, that also is uh, guaranteed to be, um, to be compatible with your blood type as well. Yeah. All right. Now we have to get our, you know, our stocks up again. So yeah. please just tell us, uh, talk us through the logistics again, where mm -hmm. and who qualifies yes. to, to give blood. Okay, the criteria to become a blood donor is quite simple. You just need to be between the age of 16 and 65. Uh, of course, those that are 16 and 17 need parental consent. Then it gets a little tricky because you need to weigh 50 kilograms or more. And I'm trying to lose weight. Make sure I put that down. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then um, you also need to uh, enjoy good general health. You must be healthy yourself at the yeah. end of the day to assist um, someone, else. Uh, someone else. And you must lead a sexually safe lifestyle because the blood transfusion uh, does all kinds of tests uh, on on the blood donations that are made, but it's also the duty of the donor to mm. ensure that you lead a sexually safe lifestyle. And just, you know, also saving someone else. You need to yeah, do and, and to protect their well-being at the end of the day. And the other requirement is that you must eat a meal within a three to four hour period before you come donate. Of course, we always offer refreshments. We got I really, 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 really <laughs> yeah, the yeah. cookies are always the best. I always look forward to those. Yeah. And yeah, primarily, you all, I just want to remind individuals also to continue doing it on a regular basis because um, some individuals do it as um, something they want to tick off a bucket list. Like, oh, I, I donated I blood, much. that's it. You know, yeah. I help save lives, yeah. I'm good. Uh, my, my deed is done. But we actually continuously need uh, blood transfusions mm -hmm. because each and every day there are different patients who actually receive uh, mm -hmm. blood transfusions and maybe just before I go we'll touch a, I can share a testimonial or two on, on different individuals yeah. who've actually received mm -hmm. blood. Um, so before we go to the testimonial, yeah. um, how much time in between can I, can I donate? Uh, okay, you can donate blood each and every 56 days, which okay. is roughly eight weeks. Okay. Yeah, so every two months you get you are actually eligible to donate okay. and you can do it Yeah, close to six times in a calendar year. Okay. Yeah, and uh, just getting into the testimonial. I actually um, met a patient um, two years ago um, It's a testimonial I love to share because <laughs> yeah, this lady also changed my perspective in terms of my role as, um, as someone who actually advocates for blood transfusion yeah. Her name is Ndili Meke Jonas, and um, she's actually a patient at the Oshakati State Hospital. Now, the special story with Ndili Meke is that she's actually been a patient since February 2003 and hasn't been discharged out of hospital. Yeah, she's been diagnosed with gastrointestinal bleeding, yeah. so that means she bleeds internally at any given time, and doctors therefore can't discharge her. She's received over 500 blood transfusions. Wow. 
in her lifetime. And this is the reality for a lot of patients across our country. Because there are so many individuals that require blood as a medical intervention. There's another patient that I personally know as well, uh, Hope, who, who um, suffers from sickle cell disease. Mm -hmm. And she needs blood transfusions every six weeks because she, uh, she gets these uh, sickle cell crises that are so painful mm -hmm. that she can't function. So a lot of us think of it in the element of trauma incidents. Exactly, yeah. just car, car, car accidents, crash, stabbing then, incidents. Yes. Yeah, but the actually other in individuals that require blood on a regular basis, such as cancer patients yes. as well as leukemia patients, because their bodies are unable to produce enough healthy cells and of their own. So I just want to encourage uh, Namibians to go out there and begin donating blood and to do so regularly. Mm. Um, and one last thing that I that I'm gonna shock Sibo uh, with is just that in Namibia, actually only 1%, literally 1% of our Namibian population donates blood annually. Okay. And I feel like as Namibians, we can do a we lot do better. More. Yeah, we can, we can do, do a do lot more. better to help ensure that lives are saved um, at, at hospitals and medical centers. And a lot of us are actually quite healthy. Yeah, and we are more than eligible. The statistics of COVID-19, we could have been like worse off than yeah. other countries, but yeah. those statistics, as bad as they might seem, would yeah. be better than most countries. Yeah, honestly. definitely. Which means we really do have like a good immune system. Yes. We're quite healthy to do this. You yeah. know what I just right now? I'm going to set my alarm. <laughs> yeah. Every after 56 weeks, you said? 56 days. Every after eight weeks. Eight weeks. Weeks. And yeah. after eight weeks, it should be a way of life. Because you're right, yeah. my thinking is also trauma related. Yeah. I never think of people that regularly yeah. need the assistance and really need the help. Yeah, definitely. And uh, that's the thought that I want to leave the listeners with. Yeah. And uh, primarily, a lot of the blood that is donated also goes to mothers who bleed excessively during childbirth. Uh, so during that procedure, mothers lose a lot of blood. And mm. potentially, for that baby to grow up to know their own mother, they would need a blood transfusion yeah. and if that's not available at that given time i, I don't want to imagine that scenario yeah. yeah titus thank you so much for coming and honestly this has just shocked me into action in order for us to be able to save each other and to be able to take care of one another and it very much is surprising that only one percent of people in this entire country are the ones that are that are donating blood and we seem to be a quite a healthy nation so we should be doing more and we will be doing more thank you so much for coming yeah thanks a lot for having me Siba, and hopefully uh, someone else is going to join you when you come uh, help save lives yes yes you know instagram twitter let me know if you want to come through mm -hmm. our handle is at 99fm and now